BTP seminar. We're here to talk about what you should know about GTP. So get ready, buckle up, and let's have some fun. What do we say? I'm All ready. Right, let's quick go through and meet the team. We have on the call today, the CEO of Lawyer.com, Gerald Gorman. Gerald Gorman leads us to be a technology first company. Um, and we'll be chiming in to add some great insight along the way as well. So welcome, Jerry. I'm Colleen Joyce. I'm the president of Lawyer.com. I am joined here by Annie. Annie works in AI product along with our super talented tech team that is on the cutting edge of AI right now. So we really have some cool things that we're working on and able to bring to everyone in the future. So there's also one more team member I'd like you all to meet, none other than ChatGPT, our newest team member who helped with our presentation, helped with a lot of stuff. So we're happy to welcome GTP here as well. So we're here to talk about how will the next generation of AI help lawyers grow their business? And we're gonna deep dive into this over the next half hour or so. But first, let's hear from our newest team member. Let's see what they have to say about ChatGPT in the legal industry. It's like having a law library in your pocket minus the musty smell. So GTP, we like that. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> so before we talk about how we use GTP in legal, we want to talk about how it's used in other areas. So this video may not impress you yet, but let me tell you why it's going to impress you. You're about to watch a video that is made completely by AI. Not one human eyeball touched this. They didn't write the script. They didn't create the image. No voiceover, no video, no music, nothing. All that happened is a human said, this is the prompt to make this. And without further ado, it may not win an Emmy. Definitely not. Maybe a razzle, if those are still a thing. Razzles? Razzies, I think. Razzies, yeah, yeah. okay. So let us show you what has been made are in three hours. Are you ready for pizza of life? Bring friends down to Pepperoni Hug Spot. Our chefs make pizza with heart and special touch. Cheese, pepperoni, vegetable, and more secret things. Need delivery? Pizzas come fast. Knock, knock, who's there? Pizza magic. Eat pepperoni hug spot pizza. Your tummy say thank you. Your mouth say, mmm. Pepperoni hug spot. It's like family, but with more cheese. All right, so knock, knock. That's AI calling, guys. Now, again, it's not winning an Emmy, but you have to understand that whole video was made without a human, which is absolutely fascinating. So with that said, it was very exciting. It's time to play a game. We love games around here. Here are the rules. I made everybody at the beginning write those C's in chat. So you all know where the chat box is, right? Because you're about to win. Somebody's about to win 50 bucks if they are the first to answer. Now we've got the team watching the chat, so they'll know who's the first to answer. Are we all ready? You know what? Let's hit number one if we're ready in the chat. All right. All right. We're seeing we lots know, of ones. We know how to use chat. Yes, that's okay. good. It's good. Oh, people are already answering questions. They All right. We didn't prompt you guys yet, but Ernesto, I like your enthusiasm. All right. So you know what, Annie? What's the question? All right. So who is the largest investor in open AI, chat GPT? Is it A, Elon Musk, B, Google, or C, Microsoft? Let's oh, see. Right. I'm seeing a variety here. Um, let's see. I think that we kicked things off. Let's see. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? It looks like Howard Newman came in first with letter C. You are correct, Howard. Microsoft is currently the largest investor in ChatGPT with a whopping $10 billion investment. $10 billion. Yes. That's crazy. It's a lot of moolah. It was invested back in January. And you might be wondering, what are they doing with all this funding? What's to, about, what's going to come? Um, so as you know, Microsoft has a whole suite of products that they offer. They've got things like Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Outlook, Microsoft 365, you're probably very familiar with. Um, and so because they have a large stake in this company, they can embed the technology really quickly, which is really awesome. Um, so meet Microsoft 365 Copilot. This is in beta. So right now, if you go search for it, you can't sign up, but it's coming soon. And here are some of the things that they are teasing, which it will provide. All right. So how many of you are using Word right now, right? Let's hit up that one in the chat. Yeah. One if you're using Word. All right. Ones. Seeing lots of ones. Yeah. One city. 
you're using Outlook. Yeah, you're using, okay, we see more ones, LinkedIn. These are all within the Microsoft ecosystem that's going to be utilizing this AI technology. So you're already halfway there because you're using all these tools. It's just gonna make it that much better. Now we joke, does anyone remember Clippy? Was Clippy the name? Yes, I've been talking about Clippy all week. Our good old friend that used to be in Word back in the late 90s that we probably lovingly remember who went away. Um, mm -hmm. This is kind of like a modern day version of Clippy. They're there to help you. Um, you can type in a prompt and it can draft to other documents and help things streamline really great. So let's talk about what companies are using ChatGPT right now. If you know any, definitely pop them in the chat. We'd love to see them. Some examples that we'll talk about is Zillow. Um, we were looking for a house. We are located in central Jersey. So central Jersey, give me a house with a tennis court. We're dreaming here, people, maybe a pickleball court. And boom, it gave us a list of places that would be of interest to us. So that's a great use. It saved me so much time. I didn't have to filter and check Snapchat. Snapchat's got an AI buddy. You might be on Snapchat. Your kids might be on Snapchat. Um, open it up and see it. I believe it's called My AI. Um, and you could have a nice little conversation with it. It needs some work. Yes, definitely so, needs some work. I'm seeing Discord in the chat. You yep. are correct with Discord. Um, what else do we have on here? We've got Salesforce. Yeah, Salesforce, Salesforce. is really big. LexisNexis. I'm sure we've got some LexisNexis users in the house. Grammarly. If you're not using Grammarly, get the plugin. It's very, very helpful. If you're anything like me, I never, I've never made a typo in my life but somehow Grammarly finds them. Um, and then there's Slack. We use Slack uh, internally. It's a great way to use communications and the AI tool. It, that's what it is. It's a tool in our tool belt. So now this is the fun part. I'm gonna launch a little poll here and we're gonna see, oh no, our poll device is not working. So we are gonna do it in the chat. All right. So let's, we're kind of getting pulse checks here. How are you feeling about AI? Okay, we've Chat got some GPT. excited, sad, overwhelmed. Anyone angry? Paul, are you angry? Paul, I want to know what you are. Let's see. Okay, we got a good mix. Got a really good mix going. Five to six, Scott. I appreciate the honesty. I do too. Yeah, you know, feeling sad and angry feels about right. I think that it's something that's new on the horizon and everyone's trying to warm up to it. Skeptical. Okay, Paul, I completely agree. Love. So we're here to help kind of ease some of that skepticism. So first and foremost, chat GTP is not a replacement. This is not you being replaced. What is it? It is a tool that you can use to help make and run a better business, be more efficient, be more effective. What we're about to show you are all tools that you can use. All right. Yeah. So Let's, how do we have, what are these tools? How do we use this? Andy, help us out. Let's dive in. So one of the biggest things is that it can provide some general legal information. So I'm going to hit you with some fun facts over here. So on average, a full-time law student, which y'all are very familiar with, um, reads 16 to 20 hours a week. The average person reads about 40 pages an hour, 13 weeks a semester, six semesters. It's a lot of reading. That's a lot of reading. My eyes hurt thinking about it. Game time, guys. This is what we like. So back to the chat. Yeah. Okay. Right, Scott. Absolutely. Absolutely. Correct. And we're going to talk about that more in the afternoon. Okay. All right. We got our first question answer <laughs> in there. I love the range here. 3,500 to 200K. We've got a good range here. Okay. Let's see. We'll get a couple more answers. Let's yeah, we're see. getting some in here. Let's see. We've got a good variety. We're going. about to find out who actually read in law school. And yes, we are. And you know what? For what it's worth, it is price is right rules apply here. Yes. So whoever is closest without going over is the winner. All right. So it looks like That's our it. first submission that was closest was Desiree Causey at 50,000. The actual answer is 62,000 pages. It's a lot of reading. And I'm sure y'all are nodding your heads like, yeah, it was a lot of reading. Yeah. And that's not even bar prep. There's even more reading that we did after that. Um, so here's where ChatGPT can kind of come in. Um, it's a tool. It's an assistant, just like Microsoft Word is a tool that helps you complete your documentation. Um, so it's just a cool thing because this assistant passed bar. So yeah, wouldn't it be good? If you had an assistant 24-7 who passed the bar at a high rate, which we'll talk about later, wouldn't you love that? Sign me up. <laughs> All uh, right. Let's do a knowledge check. 
put a one in the chat if you know what hypothecate means. Now, I can't open Google to look it up on the side. Okay. Well, All right. Oh, Desiree, that's zero. You know what, Desiree? You did win on the Red number line. of pages. So yep. it doesn't surprise me with that. That is correct. All right. I'm seeing a lot of ones in here, Good. but not in large proportion to the number of participates, participants we have. So let's pivot and let's see what our friend ChatGPT could Come help on. us with. Come on, GTP. Please explain to me what hypothecate means. And just like that, you know, we're going to show you a lot of examples in this seminar. So we'll let you read it. We'll go slow so that you could truly see what's happening. So we've asked ChatGPT, what does this mean? Explain it to me. As you can see, it's giving you a live run through of what it means. Now, it's kind of long and yeah. kind of like, well, I don't know, make it a little easier for me to read, please. Yes. It is Thursday. At some point, you're like, I could have just read the whole text if I wanted to get something sure. along. So enter our first tip, um, Eli5. It stands for explain it like I'm five. Um, so if you type that into a chat GPT bar, um, you can then put a semicolon and it will produce a um, an answer that is shorter and it's more succinct. So it's a little easier to digest. As you might've noticed in the first example, it gave a financial application, a legal application. It talked about it in different terms, um, but the Eli5 is just the broad sense. It's the broad strokes. So maybe that's not your specialty, but someone comes in and asks you for information on it and you can jog your memory really quick. It's a great, again, a tool. All right. Now let's get to the meat of it, guys. Who's ready? Well, that's cool. Yeah, it's got it. It's cool. We I, so do. I know. I like that tool. All right. Yes, you are correct, Carrie. Um, I will say Eli one is where I start. We were playing around with um, the grapes of wrath. Yes. So we Eli 10 grapes of wrath and then I Eli one grapes of wrath and it whittled it down to one sentence. It was unreal. And it, I think it was like, I think it actually says it's like a story. Yeah. Which like, you know, obviously that's not proper grammar, but it worked. Yeah. I understood it. So, and I think the biggest thing like Colleen mentioned is it's not going to be perfect. I mean, you wouldn't turn that into someone or give it to right. a judge or anything not. like that. It's just going to give you some information in an easier way. Right. So the next thing you can help with is legal research. So, um, case research. I think uh, we all know that that is a huge part of the job here, that you have to do a lot of research. Um, so you could just type it in, um, type in a landmark case, and you can get the entire description of it um, to help quickly understand why it is, in fact, a landmark case decision. So as you can see, we'll let you read. It's pumping out a lot of great information. By the way, this is happening in real time, right? It is. Just like that. Now, I think we like things short and sweet around here. I think we've, we've made that clear, but a great tool is TLDR. Too long, didn't read, summarize it. And as you can see, boom, just like that, you get one short, swift paragraph. Amazing. Anna, you have a really great question I saw in the chat of where does it pull info from? So it's a really great question. ChatGPT is pulling the World Wide Web. It is pulling it from all internet sources. Um, and so that is something we'll dive into in a little bit about the reasons of what additions are available. Um, so ChatGPT is pulling from the internet at large, documents that existed yeah. up until 2021. Um, but there are options like Bing that's put out from Microsoft Edge, and there is Bard, which is put out from Google. And those are pulling from their live search engine. So if it's available on Google, it's available to pop up as a result. And we're using, for this exercise, we were using ChatGPT4. So we'll talk about the difference between ChatGPT 3.5 and ChatGPT 4, which I'm sure you've heard about here and there and everywhere. So help create legal documentations. Guys, it's getting wild here, right? On a Thursday, I bet y'all are thinking, I wish I had this on Monday. Exactly. That's true. So helping you write a demand letter. I think this is something that can be a lot of rinse and repeat. Um, you get It yep. gets a lot of monotonous work. Um, and so it's spitting out a great demand letter. It's nothing's wrong with it. Um, and obviously you'd still be going in and editing it. This would never be something you send off as a final no. copy, but maybe I say, I think I'm doing too much editing. Um, something you could do is you can add more details, including tones. So you'll notice the blue text over here are the differences. So we're making this letter stern. We're making the letter a highlight what the possessions are that the um, complaint is being filed against. How much is the value? And by putting that in, suddenly we get a prompt put out that is pretty good. I mean, you need to do some, um, you need to do some tweaking to it, but it's nothing that is you have to start from scratch. So glorified Wikipedia, I don't know, because what it is is, so 
the way that GTP works is the information you put in will determine the information that's output. So if you put in, like you see, these detailed, this is what I want, very custom, that's what you're going to get. You'll never see that in Wikipedia. Wikipedia is just giving you kind of content information. This is customizing the prompt the way that you need it for your practice. Paul, you just put a smile on my face. That was a very funny comment there. What did Paul did say? the last judge use AI um, for false citations? That has made me chuckle. <laughs> um, I think the biggest thing that you mentioned is if there are um, concerns, we'll turn, we'll go be going into the concerns later on and dive into this in depth. Um, but you're all highlighting things that are definitely coming yeah. up and that we've been mulling over ourselves. Yeah, no, security is a big concern. So absolutely, we'll discuss all of that for sure. Uh, this one's near and dear to my heart because tomorrow morning I have jury duty. So this was kind of fun. What are, what are, what are the lawyers going to ask me when I show up for jury duty tomorrow? So again, if maybe, maybe you are one of the lawyers that will be there, you can ask chat GPT, Hey, help me write 10 thorough questions that can be used throughout my questioning. Yep. And you know what? You can be specific. Say there's a certain case and you're helping do the voice yep. questioning and you want to make sure that everything is assessed. Um, you can tell ChatGPT, it'll take that into context. Um, the biggest thing to remember is that garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. If you put something really good in, you'll get something good out. Um, but as others have highlighted here, it's not the final product. Like you still want to go back and check yeah. it and proofread it. All the things that you've been doing since law school, it's just that this kind of gives you a leg up to help expedite things. Well, and something to note here that we put is create a list of 10 thorough conversational questions. So you can tell GTP the tone of what you want. One of my favorite tones is make it punchy. Sometimes it's too punchy and you got to like draw back a little bit, but really the tone is so important when you're creating content and you can use that in GTP, which is awesome. So let's see what else we could do. Oh, fine. Draft a complaint. Another monotonous task happy. that is very important. Um, so this is another example of the more details you provide, the better. So you might say like, I'm writing up a small case description at this point, but you know, that will help provide a stronger output from the machine. Um, so you can see it is a car accident that happened back in January of 2022, um, specified the location, um, specified what the issue at hand was. So they failed to stop at a red light. And now we have issued a nice complaint that we can then go and make some edits to, but we don't have to start from scratch. Well, it's like the having thing. the associate start some of the work for you. Well, it's so true, right? So here you have a 24 seven associate who's passed the bar that can give it. Now, again, we understand the naysayers and we understand that there's concerns, which we will address, but this is a tool everybody's going to be using this. If you're not using this, you are going to be left behind. So it's a really great way, again, a tool to make you more efficient. Use it 80% and then just go in, clean up what you need and off you go. Awesome. So the next thing is drafting a contract. Another repetitive task. I know a lot of people, contracts are there for just client agreements. Maybe it's something yep. that you don't want to rewrite every single time. Um, you can put the information that you want in here and it'll take in the stipulations and the normal representations in a contract, which I think is really interesting and really great that it is factoring those pieces in. Obviously, yeah. if you've got special um, circumstances surrounding the sale or certain things that you want to put in as stipulations, you can always do that. Um, but this percent amount of it is enough to get you started is it's really the true. biggest thing. Copy, paste, put it into your Word doc, add the clauses you need, delete the clauses you don't need, and boom, you're there. So yeah, with, with state law, for sure. So obviously right now, state law, we, we did say Massachusetts, but you will want to check and reference state law, but that's where you come in and you can add those layers before you check and sign off on it. So those are, that's why we're not saying just take it, send it, off you go. You're going to take it, edit it, and then off you go. Absolutely. And same thing. It's like, if you have this document, you said, you know what, I'm really impressed. Can you make that for Nancy too? Yeah. It'll remember that. And I think someone mentioned earlier, concern for privacy. Maybe you don't put the name, the defendant's name in chat GPT. Maybe you just say XXX is the name of the client and it'll spit out a contract that you yep. can then copy and paste into a platform that you feel more secure in. And then you've gotten yourself started at least. Yep. No, that's a great Pro tip right there, Annie. So thank you. Oh, the fun one. All right, guys, we're about to have a game. So if you're not paying attention, listen up because it's game time. So let's create a will. It's that easy. 
Let's it see. looks like it. Please draft a will. Let's see what it comes up with, guys. Do we have any estate lawyers out there? His beloved wife. See, oh. this is doing, it's adding some extra touches. Love maybe that. if you are an estate lawyer, maybe you would put your own tweak on it. Maybe you have some clauses that you like to put in. You found success with your clients. Absolutely. This is something that gets you started and it's something different. Maybe this isn't your specialty. And maybe it's something that you're looking at, like, I couldn't make it be something I'm pretty specialized I, in. A nice add on. So, with that, are you guys ready for a game? Get those fingers ready. Get over to the chat box. Here's the question. How many Americans have a state plan? Closest to the number wins. Man. Y'all don't seem very promising Jeez. over here. We got 23%, I think 9%. We all need to go into a state law. I think that this is the market, everyone. All okay. right. We Who's have some low here. Um, so let us see. I think that the closest here would be Gregory. Nice job, Gregory. The correct answer is 34%. And for those that have an estate plan, um, go do it today, right? Yeah. We, we said that we would do it too, because we're part of that 34%. Yeah, guilty. Books. Guilty. But it's an opportunity. There are 66% of Americans who don't have an estate plan. If you can try to figure out how to add that on as a value-added service to your clients, that's phenomenal. We're talking a basic will. I could go right now to LegalZoom. I could go anywhere. Or I could go to my lawyer who's helping me and I could say, hey, actually, I don't have a will. Can you help me? And if it's not your expertise, you can use ChatGP as a tool, even if it is, and boom. Now I'm an even happier client because you've given me something of value. And you don't have to charge me that much if you don't want to. Because... And she's going to tell me who needs one too. I know. We both do. <laughs> We're in the market, guys. So awesome. Nice job, Greg. So all of this is great, um, but it does make us wonder uh -huh. about the concerns. And I think that everyone has mentioned that there are concerns that we've gotten coming up. Um, so let's dive in. Um, so the first concern is hallucinations. Mm. So I heard someone mention in the chat um, that it gave a fake case citation and yep. nobody has time for that. We cannot use that in court. That is not acceptable and it's not Just admissible. Barred. Yeah, not what we want. Um, so the biggest thing to realize with hallucination is that a hallucination in chat GPT is referring to irrelevant info. So it's spitting out stuff. I asked it to help me answer something for someone who's looking for an attorney and it told me how to make a Twitter account. That's not what I asked no, for. So that's wrong. Right. Um, it can sometimes be incoherent. Sometimes it says borderline gibberish. You don't know really what it's saying. <laughs> um, so that's not helpful. And sometimes it's inaccurate. So those false case citations, like we mentioned, um, that's not great. And it's not doesn't necessarily leave the best impression for you as the user. But that's why it's not replacing you. Correct. That's why you're using it as a tool. Absolutely. So that's, that is why having that legal litmus test inside of you, it matters. Yeah. There's a reason that you pass the bar. There's a reason that you're a practicing attorney. AI is not going to be that. I think that we've all heard on that instance of do not pay, wanted to argue a case with AI in front of a court. And that was ruled out. It was not admissible. So I think the biggest thing to remember is you are a smart individual. And so being specific in your prompts, that can help. That can help reduce the ambiguity. Reducing the ambiguity will help make it clearer. Um, knowing the limitations. So understanding that it might not be up to date. It has issues with, if you ask it questions from World Cup data, it doesn't know that because it hadn't happened yet in the mind of the machine. Um, and also the complexity of the language used. Um, another concern that might uh, come up. This is a fun topic, guys. Get ready. Let's hear you in the chat. And we'll, we'll go slow and we stop for questions because I feel like this is really an interesting topic that you guys are going to like. Absolutely. So there are questions of who owns it. Karen, I saw something in here. It depends. I heard someone else mention the cloud. Um, oh, the cloud. So I, it's interesting. It's a really good question. So let's dive in. So first up on the dock is Narito v. Slater. Naruto, this lovely little macaw monkey, um, is the case precedent that is currently being cited by the Copyright Office. Um, so Naruto, back in 2011, was a macaw living in a reserve in Indonesia, and a photography uh, photographer was out there snapping photos of the wildlife. Naruto picked up his camera and took a selfie, and the photographer Slater ended up publishing it in a book. Our good friends at PETA said, no, no, that's not your work. It belongs to Naruto. So they sued. And 
after some appeals, the U.S. Court of Appeals in the Ninth Circuit ruled that be, that Naruto lacked statutory standing because the Copyright Act does not protect non-humans. Um, and so therefore, this is relevant in um, an AI situation because what is being produced is being produced by a computer, by a machine. It's not protected because it is not human input. Um, and so that is something I definitely invite you to read what has been put out from the copyright um, board of just trying to see from the Public office domain. of what they believe. Okay, I read yep. The court was correct. The machine or the animal cannot have property rights. Awesome. So let me dive in the next one, my other favorite one. Um, so this is currently on the docket. Um, so in the early 80s, a photographer took this photo on the left of Prince um, and copyrighted the photo. It's a great photo. Um, Vanity Fair opted to license that photo for artistic reference to Andy Warhol in the late 80s. Um, so Warhol transformed that photo and he made his iconic silkscreen images and printed them out as you can see on the right. When they were printed in Vanity Fair and published, Warhol gave credit to the original photographer. So the original photographer was okay. Um, she was paid a fee and all was okay. Um, however, in 2016, when Prince passed away, Vanity Fair opted to publish the orange prints in honor of him, and they no longer gave credit to Goldsmith. Enter the problem. At what, and so Goldsmith sued because she said, I didn't get credit, I didn't get paid for my work, and this is infringement. Um, so there is currently a case that is argued before the Supreme Court. We're waiting for a decision to be issued. Um, Warhol's foundation argues fair use. He transformed it beyond the original image. But Goldsmith argues that it's recognizably derived from her photo. Um, so there's two sides to the coin, and it's definitely something that we are eagerly awaiting the response to, um, as that will have an impact with yes. AI. At what point does the work transform from the original, yep. the original issuance that it's now no longer your work? It's become someone else's. So we talked about anyone. Has anyone heard about fake Drake yet? Hit one if you've ever heard about fake Drake. It kind of blew up a little bit. Okay, we got some fake Drakes. Okay. So what's fake Drake? So AI has come out and put an album, Drake's album out. They did the same with Oasis. David Guetta, who's a famous musician, went in and recreated Eminem saying, what was he saying? The future sound. The Ray future sound. sound. And David Guetta went on camera and said, listen, in an afternoon, I built this. So who owns that? Is it David Guetta? Is it Eminem? Is it Drake? Is it fake Drake? There is so much for us to learn. And we're just standing at the beginning of this. So it's really interesting topics that we've got to discuss like we're doing now. So, And the next concern is really the unknown. I think that we all can admit that we have no idea what tomorrow brings. Um, and so this is just something of like a little bit of fun and jest of like a Terminator like future ex machina. Who knows? Hopefully nothing, nothing doomsday, but it is something just that we are yeah. acknowledging that we don't know what we don't know. I mean, who knows what tomorrow brings every day? We spend hours um, <laughs> working and trying to research of any updates coming out. And so this is something that may evolve by tomorrow. Well, so I will so. say our extremely talented designer and marketing extraordinaire, Kristen, made this image. She did. She wrote the prompt, as you could see. So does Kristen own the image? According to OpenAI, Kristen does own the image. Interesting. Um, so right now, according to OpenAI, whoever enters the input owns the output. Um, and so it's an interesting piece, but the a, the machine itself can't own the output. It right. would be the person who enters the like prompt. the monkey. Correct. So how's everybody feeling? We we having fun because this is fast paced and if you think this is fast paced it is nothing compared to ai i don't think we've slept in like months because of everything that's oh i feel oh thanks paul he feels fine what do we think what's next what exactly. is next karen great question so let's how finish. fast is ai moving the answer is faster than fast whatever that is so let's talk about how um Chat GPT, remember our 24 hour assistant who also passed the bar? Let's take a look at that. What else did they pass? Anyone here take microeconomics? Let's hit one if anyone in the group. Oh, well, there's a few. There's We've a few. We've got some. We've got some. So uh, I let's see. So we talked about Chat GPT 3.5 and Chat GPT 4. So Chat GPT 4 is the most up to date current version. So Chat 3.5 went in and scored a 60%. Not great. ChatGPT4, 
82%. It was able to learn, retake the test and dominate it. Let's see what's next. L stats. My girl, L Woods, she probably got in that 90%. I think like 99%. Yeah, she was, she was in a she very was. high percentile. But ChatGPT, 45%, 3.5. So when it took the test as a four, what did it score? OMG is right, Paul. 85%. Pretty good. All right, hold on to your seats. There needs to be like a drum roll. Can we get like a virtual drum roll here? The bar exam. Who's ready? Wait, before we do anything, what do we think... 3.5 scored. What do we think? Anybody? This, this is, is the average. average so the average, the national average, the national average pass rate was 78%. So let's see. Okay. 75. So chat GPT 3.5. What did you get? I did this whole 10%. 10%. I would be embarrassed. It was bad. It was bad. It failed. What about you chat GPT 4? What did you learn and score? 90%. I don't think we have to even say anything. Yeah. I think that speaks for itself. But again, here, if there is a tool out there that can score 90% on something, oh my gosh, you need to be using it. Absolutely. I think the and biggest- from it. And, and be flexible. You know, again, it's not going to have the state law. We can, uh, Howard, we'll tell you what it did on the MCATs. It's not going to have the right state law. It, it may have hallucinations. It's going to have its faults, just like the rest of us, but you got to give it a shot. So how else- is AI moving fast? Um, all right, Annie, talk to us about generative versus diffusion AI. Absolutely. So this is a really meaty topic. And I'll be honest, we could spend a couple hours talking about this alone. Easily. But the biggest takeaway that I wanted to share with this slide is that even the term AI and how it's generating things and an output is evolving. So there's already different models of it. Yeah. Um, so typically you're going to hear a lot about generative AI. That's something like chat GPT, that's BARD, that's Bing. You put in data and it gives you new, it gives you data that off of it. So we put in that case prompt, it gave us something out after. Um, and it's pretty high quality, but it's pretty slow and it can be expensive to train it. Um, so for accuracy purposes, it could take a while to get there. Um, Diffusion AI, on the other hand, starts with random noise and it adds a lot of detail. So that image that Kristen shared with us earlier at the Terminator, that's an example of Diffusion AI. She used a couple random words and it put different pieces together across the internet in order to create that image. Which is so cool. Um, so here are just some examples of these products and just where you might see these products offered. Um, so like we said, we're talking about ChatGPT today, but there are other options. If you are a Microsoft Edge user um, and your browser is up to date, in your upper right-hand corner, you'll notice that there is a large B. If you click that B, it's a circle. It should pop out a sidebar that allows you to interact with Bing 2.0, which is Microsoft's version of ChatGPT that is more proprietary. Again, they are the investor in ChatGPT. So this is all the same technology. Um, but BARD is a different one. That's through Google. I'm going to be honest. It's my personal she, favorite. That's I'm, how she AIs, guys. I am biased, but uh, you could do that. It might prompt you to have to have a personal Gmail account versus a corporate one or an enterprise yeah. account. Um, but definitely invite you to play around with it. They're all different preferences, um, but there's a lot to learn from each of them. So the legal race, the legal AI race, the amount of excitement, the amount of brilliant minds right now working to try to make law better for you, for consumers, for everybody is happening at a rapid pace. As you can see, these are some of the um, companies that are out there getting funding to help build better AI. And we're not talking small amounts here by any means. So some of the names you're going to recognize, Case Text, LexisNexis, Purchase, Lex. Machina. So there's a lot of really great options. Jasper is going to be working with HubSpot if you use HubSpot as your CRM. So there's endless opportunities that are coming to you. And the three options on the left, Henchman, um, IO, Clarity AI, and Harvey AI, um, they are all options that are live. You can sign up and try to submit your name. There are some wait lists going for them, yeah. um, but it helps with contract drafting. So if we've got contract lawyers in here that they say, I want to embed this directly in Word, forget about it. I don't want to copy and paste. I want to do it there. Um, these are offerings. So it's something to check out and look into. But I think the biggest takeaway is that there's a lot of funding happening here and it is a wave of the future just like is that right yeah. I mean, if this doesn't tell if this doesn't tell you something come on we got to wake up and listen 
and say, okay, how am I going to adapt? How am I going to use this? So with that said, guys, how are we feeling? Are we still overwhelmed? Paul, did we win you over? Okay, but any, so we'll, we'll, we'll get to questions in a second, but we've got two announcements that we'd like to make. The first one is, if you enjoyed today, we're doing this again next week. Chances are that in the week, um, uh, the content's gonna change because AI is, yes, moving that fast. So um, please feel free to join us or tell anybody else in your office who would like to learn that uh, we will be here May 11th at 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. Announcement number two, if you are interested in taking hands-on approach to using AI, setting up an account, learning how it can help grow your business, please join us at our Business Builder Bootcamp which is being held in two weeks in Scottsdale, Arizona at the beautiful JW Marriott. We are going to be talking about how to use AI. We're gonna be sitting there drafting letters. We were playing around with creating closing statements for murder trials. The possibilities are endless. This doesn't mean that you have to implement it right away. We are giving you the tools and teaching you how to use these tools live. It's a two-day seminar, and we're going to spend one whole day dedicated to making AI great. So with that said, if you're interested, you call me, you email me, we'll get you some information. And I think it's time to open it up to some questions to um, to see what everybody's thinking, or if we want to have some discussions, talk about who owns the input output, we'd love to have that. So Annie, let's see what's happening in chat right now. Okay. Awesome question, Anna. How can I safely download it or access it? So um, you are just going to want to go to chat period, openai period.com. I will put that in here in the chat. Um, if you visit that website, it'll prompt you to make an account. Um, you can make it pretty easily. Um, you can use a Google account or may use a personal account and it'll get you started. Um, you can use the free version. I believe yeah. that there are some credits that are available that you can type in prompts and play around with it. Um, the free version is 3.5. So I do want to warn you that yeah. that one is up to date, I believe through 2020. Um, you can pay $20 a month for the plus version that is up to date from 2021. Um, currently we're playing around on that version and the output is a lot better. Awesome. So, okay. So people want to know, can it help us read through documents? Can we upload? So lots of good questions. With chat GP specifically, do you want to take that on? Because I know you can't upload. Yeah. So for the docs to for revision, um, right now your best bet would just be to copy and paste the contents of that document yeah. into chat GPT and say, clean this up for me, or can you summarize polish this it. up? Yeah. Summarize it for me, create some bullet points for me on this. Um, that it can do that. When it comes to uploading it to cache it, that does not have the technology as a standalone product yet to do that. Some of those legal tech ones that we talked about, like henchman, hard. Harvey, Clarity, yeah. those are companies that are directly tying in those contract pieces um, to help with revisions and everything like that. And that's coming fast because that it's something that would be very helpful. All right, what other questions we have? And feel free to come off mute. You know, this is a conversation, guys. So anyone's brave enough to come off mute for a $25 gift card to ask a question? Off camera, on mute. I mean, camera on, mute off. Anyone? Come on, Amazon, 25 bucks. Who's got me? Yes, yes, yes. All right, who do we got? It's Carrie Sue. Oh, Carrie, I love it. All right, this would be good. I don't know where my camera is. I can't see myself. That's but, okay, but for, hopefully we know the answer, Carrie, because you, you're you a pro. We're ready, Carrie. I, yeah. I'm just curious, like you mentioned a couple of different like EL. Like, are there, is there a place to find those kind of acronyms? that we so, can throw into chat GPT? Sure. Like, is so there a I, good place to find those? I know Carrie cut out. So let me just summarize for Annie. So uh, Carrie wants to know, we learned some cool tricks like Eli5, TLDR. Are there other prompts out there or keywords? Maybe it's something we send around to everybody. You know what? We are going to send around an infographic, Carrie Sue. And so you, we will have those on there so that you can have that and you can either print it out or just save it on your phone so that you'll have it available for you. You know who else you can ask, Carrie? Does anyone know the answer? GPT. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so I, Howard, your question, have you heard whether ChatGPT is requiring one to use a Microsoft account or to continue with Google since a standalone email mm -hmm. address is producing? Um, really great question. So I, when it comes to using Google versus Microsoft for ChatGPT, um, there really shouldn't, I believe that they don't have 
barriers on it. Um, but they, I know that Bard does. So if you were to go to Bard, it would require you to have a Microsoft account and use that Microsoft Edge browser. Um, but for ChatGPT, it should allow you to use it standalone. Bard though, makes you have a Google account. So ChatGPT is supposed to be the intermediary. Yeah. So I might reach out to their support team to see if they can help with that because that shouldn't be propping up. All right. Uh, Irene wants to know, can we get this presentation? Yes. So if you are interested, I think what we'll do is we will send out anyone who's RSVP'd, we're going to send out a supplement just to kind of highlight everything that we've talked about and then feel free to follow up. All right. Other questions? Let's go. This is fun. This is AI fun. Has anyone played around with AI? I know Carrie has. Anybody else in the room for fun or for work? Uh, yes. All right. Let's see. Well, let's hear it, guys. Tell us the application. Anybody? I played around. I was making images last week. That was yeah. fun last weekend. I'm trying to write a song for lawyer.com. So ChatGPT is writing the lyrics for me. And I was using Beethoven to help me write the beat, but I was way over my head. So I had to stop. I was oh, silly poems. I love that. Inspirational quotes. That That's always a fun way, right? I'm using it to hire people. I need Ooh. to expand my office staff. And it writes the best wanted ads like for job placements so is, are you like for classified for online ads for like yeah. indeed or all of the above any of them like you can you can actually stand out from the pack when you have chat gpt write your headline and write your wanted ad i, I mean it's it's really compelling and if you ask it to write it as a copywriter <clears throat> it's amazing Absolutely amazing. See, that's okay. Pro I'm tip. so glad you mentioned that, Jenna. If you, um, when you're setting up for ChatGPT, you can set the identity. So you could say, you are a paralegal. You are helping me draft yeah. this complaint. Um, your tone is friendly, polite, but stern. Um, here's what you need to do and see what it spits out. Um, I think someone had mentioned in here about the critical abilities in literature. I think that is yeah. something that's a, it's a hard thing. I think the critical thinking skills are continuing to refine with each edition, um, but it's not perfect. I think we it's know, definitely we know GTP isn't great with math, um, so you can kind of you could Google some funny funny. Uh, I think they say forty nine is greater than 40 yeah, something yeah very silly like that. So you can find a lot of examples. But the thing is, is there's more good than bad. And like anything, we want to focus on how it's good um, and how it can help us. Um, and it made it make a hash of it. Okay, well, so that's, you know, it's good that we're sharing ideas and seeing what works and what doesn't work. I love that. Anyone else off mute want to chat? I like the, the job ads. We write marketing emails. You know, we're saying everybody's going to be using ChatGPT. And last year, not so much. So, hey, we thought we were the top of the heap last year with all of our content. We were we were maybe writing what we thought were B-level emails. Well, those B-level emails are immediately now a C because of ChatGPT, because what Jenna was just saying. So we have to work even harder to get from our now C to A emails. So really important to utilize it. And the biggest thing too, I would just, um, when it comes to the different options available to you, the, um, the synonym I've been using it, it is, it's kind of like the time before iPhones became huge, um, when there was Blackberries, there were Androids, mm -hmm. there was iPhone, there's flip phones still. Um, we all remember those days and everyone pretty much picked a lane. I was very sold on my flip phone. I never wanted to move off of it. I swore to the heavens it would never happen. But suddenly every person I knew had iPhone and I really wanted iMessage. And so look what happened. I fell into iPhone. Um, and so I think the biggest thing is, is that that might happen. One might appear as a dominant player and it might be um, kind of like the monopoly, but there's no saying that there are still folks with Androids and iPhones. So, yeah. you know, it's always worth playing around. Maybe one doesn't fit for you, but you can always try out another one and get familiar with it. So Paul brings up an interesting point. Paul, you're not the only one that's worried. You're not the only one that's having sleepless nights over this. This is very new and this is very changing of, of how our future looks. But the best thing that we could do is stay informed and stay Absolutely. up to date. And as leaders in the legal industry, it's our responsibility to provide you with that information. So stay close, stay posted with us. We'll be doing webinars. We'll be doing live events to teach you, to help you sharpen these tools. Like we said, we're going to be in Scottsdale in two weeks and Annie's going to be there on the ground. She is the pro. She's going to be teaching you how to use AI in and out. 
and she's a you know she's the expert guys so let's see what else okay um will it answer languages yeah, that's a huge thing, Sierra, you mentioned in the chat to Sandra, like, you know, having it translate into different languages, that's massive. You know, maybe you have a Spanish speaking client who comes in and you are conversational, but you can't type it out. Now this gives you an opportunity to produce a written work that's in Spanish. It's just another tool that you can use. In right. right. And again, it's, it may not be perfect, but it's getting you to 80% and it passed the bar. Remember that your 24 seven virtual assistant. We all want that. Um, any other questions, guys? We got a full room. Let's chat. Anyone want to come next week? Let's put ones in there. If you want to come next week and, and talk different content, we're all right. Awesome. Freedom AI. Okay. We will put free, we will look into Freedom AI, more info on that and the MCAT scores. We are, yeah. we are going to have, we're taking note on that and we will be adding that in for next week to have some more insight. So that's how you're supposed, that's how you're going to come back. Yeah. You got to come back for that. But look at all these people, right? So this is so top of mind. It's so important that we talk about it and we figure out how to use it. So uh, again, we're here. Anyone have any questions? We've got nothing to do, but AI is that doing our work for us. Let's see. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Paul, it is a funny question. What happens if I rely on AI to do all my motion arguments? And then when I ask it to write the final motion for dismissal replies, I'm sorry, I can't do that. <laughs> you know, I had a thought of mock trial and how many people, how many kids are going to be using this to help draft all their questions for mock trial? They're going to feed in the docs and all the case briefs and all the depositions, and then they'll have all the questions. So it'll be this very repetitive for the um, you lawyers. To. To I mean, if, you, if, if everybody's going to be doing it, you can't be the only one left behind because then you're the one producing the C-level work, which was a last year. Right? Did everyone have fun today? Ones for fun? C's. All right. We got a C's. All right. Ones. Okay. Let's see. The problem yeah. is using GTP. Oh, Oops. I mean, I see it. It's pulling from the web and not specifically okay. for places like Westlaw and ne LexisNexis. You're right. You know, I think for case specific details, yeah. um, it's definitely something I invite you to play around with and to kind of find which one you're most comfortable with. Um, we've looked at things like fast case, case text, um, LexisNexis, they have Lex Machina. That is another way that it's I encourage you to check that out. That's a really new feature they yeah. added. Um, really cool feature embedded within LexisNexis. So you know that you have that secure platform that you're operating within. Will it do quantum research? That's a good question. We'll follow up on that. I know that I can say from a logic standpoint, uh, I think that it definitely has room to improve. So I don't know how well it is on quantum research, but it probably could. All right. So I see a question here. This is for the group. Mark wants to know, has anyone uploaded a motion for summary judgment and the response with exhibits and asked how the judge will rule and why? I love that question. So that's a good, anyone? Anyone? Off mute? In chat? You know, we were talking about how we can pump information in to predict what the case would be worth. Mm -hmm. but this is a little different than that. Has anybody else played around with this? Yes, yes. it is. Um, Scott, you're correct. It is. It is able to take in that much info. Um, it might not be able to take it all in on that one submission. You might have to do three or four submissions. It can only take so many words in at once. Um, but it'll do it and it'll take it in and it can learn. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. And when you have an account, it will keep, it'll start learning from you. So you can upvote things, you can downvote things, you can say that was way off and I don't want it. Um, do you have a how to start playing with AI for dummies? We don't, but you know, we we're will, gonna we're going to make it right now. We'll make it this weekend for you, Lisa. The fun thing is the way that I learned is start with things that are interesting to you, right? Like, oh, well, I like travel. Oh, your email for about Maggie's birthday party. Right. I'm, 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 I'm trying to plan a birthday party for my daughter. So I used it to plan the party. I love travel. I'm using it to plan my fall vacation. That's a fun way to get comfortable with it before bringing it into the office. So that's, AI, a, that's a good question, right? Can we upload documents to different AI platforms? This is all so new, moving so fast that we have to just stay up to date and be mindful of what's happening because there, if there's no precedent set, there will be very soon. 
Absolutely. And I think the biggest thing, Anna, for those concerns, I would say um, throw in documents that don't have any pertinent case information. I think of like for health cases, any PHI info, yeah. redact it before you feed it in. Um, even if it's redacted, it might be able to feed it in. Or you could use a placeholder name. Maybe the name's not real. Maybe the address is fake. Um, and you're changing certain details so it's not an accurate picture. But a lot of the companies that we had mentioned in the AI race, they're addressing these concerns Head that on. you have right now. And when they launch, that's what they're going to lead with. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So definitely check those out and we yeah. will provide that in the follow-up information we send out. All right. Well, guys, that was fun. We had a great time. We're going to come back next week. Anyone interested in coming and meeting Annie in uh, Arizona for a full day, please let us know. It has been a pleasure chatting with everyone. We're going to stick around. So if you want to, you know, we'll keep the room open and we're happy to answer any questions, but we thank everybody for joining us. It's been a, a, a great week. It's been fantastic it's been having happy. you. And thank you for all the engagement, everyone. Yeah. It's been awesome. Thank you. All right, guys, but feel free if you want to stick around, ask some questions. We're here. Thank you. Seas, I, I like that we're spreading the seeds. I Spread like the seeds, guys. This is the right way or backwards. Not sure. Thank you all. Thank you. We look forward to seeing everyone next week. New topics. AI is going to change and evolve in the next week. Mm -hmm. That it will. We know it. Anyone have any questions? We're here. We'll ask each other questions. How do you like to use AI, Annie? Oh, that's a great question. I just like asking it to see, playing around with different prompts. I love doing the Eli 5. I love doing the TLDR. Okay. I like just seeing and also comparing different platforms. So doing a TLDR in Bing and then doing it in Bard and then doing it in ChatGPT, it's all slightly different. And you just kind of pick your flavor. You figure out which one you really enjoy. So you're a Bard girl. Mm -hmm. Why? So many reasons. The <laughs> output, I like that it gives you citations. That's something that's a perk. Um, that's it nice. gives you options. You can pick different drafts to pick a different. I don't like the way that's phrased. Give me a different one. Um, and it gives you really cool tables too. If you ask it, I don't understand something. Can you spit it out in a table? Gives it to you clear as day. Now, you do you have, have to, to pay for Bard? No, it's free. Ooh. Is it? And it's up to date? It is. So it's one could argue that it could be better than GPT 4 Yep. All right. Well, we got a question. Uh oh, Paul's got a conclusion. Let's, I'm excited for this, guys. Lean in. Let's hear it. I hope it's going to be good. And Paul, if your conclusion <laughs> is that Bard will be number one, I agree with that. Annie's on it. Okay. Oh, okay. Annie's giving you the abbreviations. It can. You can ask legal specific questions to it. It'll be the same as ChatGPT, that it can always be more refined and it's not going to replace your legal hat, um, but it will um, be able to provide some overview. All right, All right. Let's see. What did Paul do? Okay. All right. It's interesting. All right. Everyone look in the chat. Paul, Paul may have gotten this from GTP or not. Let's see. Right. Okay. True. Yep. So here Paul is talking about the complexities of AI and law. Mm -hmm. So bringing up some great point, but here, how can it help some of the benefits? It will save you time and money. It will help you be more efficient and productive. Paul, did you write that or did GTP write that for you? Generative, what does GPT stand for? Generative processing terminology, I believe. Yes. Yeah. I think if we were in charge, we would have given it a better name, but they didn't ask us. I'm not sure why. Paul, I like that. Bard is Bard is best. <laughs> but I um I appreciate all of you and all of your engagement. And um any questions about um having the deck, we will follow up. And so I think I saw a question in here. We'll follow up via email. Yeah, absolutely, guys. GTP so genitive pre-trained tra again. Why didn't they call us? Paul, you know, I, you are the only other one. I think that that's why they named it Bard as well. I think it's after Shakespeare. They've got some long acronym that they say it's for, but I don't buy it. I think it's for Shakespeare. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, this is fun. Any other questions? Feel free. We're here. I see Todd. Hey, Todd. I met Todd in Las Vegas at our business builder boot camp. We had a great time, right, Todd? Todd is like, yes, it was fabulous. <laughs> uh, a bard by any other name, it's still a bard. Paul, you yeah, that was fun. I'll see you in Vegas again in August, I think. All right, Todd. All right, awesome. Todd, are you using AI at all? Um, I haven't yet. Uh, 
I do mostly trademark, so there's not really been too much of a need for it. And sure. uh, I can do my I can do my own research if I have to double check it anyways. But I'm I'm not close to it. Like I have to do a cease and desist or something. Sure. Well, listen. By the time we meet you in August in Vegas, it'll be leaps and bounds from where we are today, and I think we'll be able to really teach you some cool things on day two. Sounds good. All right, guys. Awesome. Any other question? Mark, did you have fun? I like to just call people out. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Awesome, guys. Oh, no, Richard, I hope it didn't say you had any. <laughs> oh, all right, guys. Well, listen, we had a great time. Let's leave you wanting more so that you all come back next Thursday, 11 p.m. If you need to reach us for any reason. 11 a.m. Uh, maybe you said 11 p.m. See, I have no idea. <laughs> 11 may 11th may 11th at 3, 3 p.m eastern yes standard time uh feel free to contact us beforehand and That's again true. we are going to be live in scottsdale arizona where it's beautiful talking about how we can use ggp eventually okay paul's right paul is now fully converted i would like to say our job is done paul came in he was like oh, this isn't for me and now he's talking about how we're all going to be interacting with AI all day long. So Paul, thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you all for joining us. Have a great weekend and hopefully we see you next Thursday at 3 p.m. Bye y'all. Bye. Have a good one. Bye.